Therefore, it was necessary for the copies of the things of the heaven to be cleansed with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor was it that he would offer himself often, as the high priest enters the holy place year by year, with blood that is not his own. Otherwise, he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now once at the consummation of the ages, he has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment, so Christ also, having been offered once to bear the sins of men, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await. All God's people say. of Jesus. 
chapter 7. There's a better covenant yeah. in chapter 8. Yeah. Because Christ is better, we have a better sanctuary in yeah. chapter 9. Yeah. But I like chapter 10. Because Christ is better, we have a better sacrifice. Yeah. The New Testament writers were well aware of sacrifice and the rituals <laughs> associated with sacrifice. But, but let me make the point. The reason there was a need for sacrifice is because of sin. <laughs> and we can dance around and play around. Church, we got a problem with sin. Amen. Amen. Not just the sin in the garden, but the sin that you and I have participated in. <laughs> Because sin is not going away, we need a sacrifice. The Hebrew writer gives at least five warnings in this great book. He is concerned that these Christians are, are neglecting the word and they are drifting from what they obey. He is concerned because those that he writes to are doubting the word. Yeah. They have a hard heart. Yeah. And I just want to say, if we do not receive the word, we are in bad shape. Right. Psychology has its place. Sociology has its place. But the word of God is able to save our souls. Yeah. Hebrew writer was concerned because not only were they drifting and doubting from the word, but they were coming all toward the word. And they had even started to despise the word. It's one thing to drift, to doubt, to become dull, and even to despise the word of God, but we are on shaky ground when we defy the word. And, and the Hebrews that the writer, I keep saying the writer because I, I have some difficulty addressing this book to Paul and Paul is a great man, but I, I just believe the style and the language of this book is not similar to Paul's other writings. If you want to hear from Paul, we won't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a different style. Hebrew letter is written. And he's concerned because of their drifting, their doubting, their dullness, their despising, and defiance of the Word of God. And some of them gave some thought to going back to Judaism. They gave some thought, perhaps because of the persecution that they were facing that what they had under the old law was better than what they had under the law of Christ. So he introduces the concept of sacrifice in chapter 9. And, and the writer discusses sacrifice under the new covenant in three stages. Verses 1 through 10, he lets us know that the old covenant system at the tabernacle is presented as a background picture to help explain what Jesus did in the new covenant. I know you are aware of what happened under the old covenant and the tabernacle, but that tabernacle was made with hands. There's another tabernacle. But this tabernacle is made without hands. Yes. Verses 11 to 28, the writer talks about the effectiveness of the blood of Christ. And he explains it or describes it in detail. Yeah. You and I know that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Yeah. Amen. Under that old law, Bulls, goats, and calves would be slain. And their blood would be sprinkled as a sacrifice for the 
sins. And the priest would offer the sacrifice for himself and for the people. But the blood of Christ is greater than the blood of bulls and goats. Amen. Finally, the writer in chapter 10, the first 18 verses, he wants these people to know that the sacrifice of Christ is being made once. Yeah. The priest had to make several sacrifices, at least once a year. But the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary was made once, but is effective for eternity. So the writer points out the obvious contrast between the old covenant ministry and the new covenant ministry. Under the old covenant, repeated sacrifices. Under the new, one sacrifice. Amen. Under the old covenant, the blood of others covered sin. But under the new covenant, it's the blood of Christ that puts away sin. Amen. Under the old covenant, it was for Israel only. Amen. I'm glad for the new covenant. Amen. Because it covers all sin. That's all of us. Amen. Amen. Under the old covenant, it left the holy of holies. But under the new covenant, Christ entered into heaven and remains there. Under the old covenant, the priest came out to bless the people. But under the new covenant, when Christ returns, he's coming to take his people back to glory. Y'all don't have to shout, but I, I, I'm glad he's coming back. <laughs> and I just feel that he's coming back for me. And he's coming back for everyone who will submit to the will and the Lordship of Christ. In chapter 9, the writer uses the word appear at least three times. Verses 24 through 28. And the use of these, this word appear gives us a summary of what Jesus did on earth. In verse 26, the writer brings out that Christ has appeared to put away sin by dying on the cross. In verse 24, he is appearing now in heaven for us. I'm glad that when I mess up, somebody speak it up for me. Do I have any help? We have somebody on the right hand of God that intercedes and talks to the Father and understands what we know from him. Not only has he appeared, not only is he appearing, but one day he shall appear. I understand he did not say something a little bit better now. I often quoted, quoted it for his appointed other man once to die, and after this the judgment, but in the right of mind, when he wrote that, he's not just talking about our physical death. He's trying to compare that we died once physically, and the Lord died once on the cross for our sins. Yes. Jesus was some kind of man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. 100% man and 100% God at the same time. Right. Paul said, who being in the form of God, not a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Yeah. Took upon himself the form of a servant yeah. and was made in the likeness of man. Yeah. I'm glad that Jesus was man and God right. at the same time. Right. Man enough to be born of a woman. Yeah. But God enough to create the first woman from the rib of man. Yeah, right. Man enough to be a fetus in the womb of Mary, yeah. but God enough to be born of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. Man enough to be homeless. He said once foxes and old, yeah. birds of the air, at best, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. But he's God enough that he went to prepare many mansions. Yeah. Man enough to eat bread and fish, yeah. but God enough to miraculously multiply five barley loaves yeah. and two small fishes yeah. and feed five thousand. Yeah. I'm glad he's man and God yeah. at the same time. Man enough to 
Jesus Christ as our sin sacrifice. 
Let's really be a light. 